Hello and welcome to Inspire. I'm Patty and this is my co-host Miji. Miji and I created Inspire as a way to tell stories about people just like you and me who are doing really amazing things to make the world a better place. And the stories are uh, vulnerable, they're um, thought-provoking, they're fun, and they're about love. And um, today we have a wonderful guest with us. So we have no one other than New Jersey's bad boy, Mike <laughs> Marino. Thank well, you hey, for being it's nice here. to be here. Thank uh. you so much. And this whole thing is about love. You called me New Jersey's bad boy. I don't know if it fits for today, but okay. We could just say Mike Marino. Mike Marino. Well, Mike, um, it is about love. And uh, what I know about you is just you're, you're just a, a man who's always, always giving back to the community. As a matter of fact, that's how um, Patty and I met. You were doing a charity event. And uh, you said uh, you came to me and said you might want to get to know her. You don't remember that, you know, <laughs> apparently, but yeah, that's how she and I met. Um, well, I do a lot ago, of fundraisers, so. and I like giving back, and I'm always uh, ready to entertain and raise money for, let's say, maybe someone who's unfortunate or maybe someone who's uh, going through some hard times. So, yeah, we do with that. And uh, I do bring out outside people, like um, some people who just want to see the show, who have nothing to do with the actual event, and it helps the event anyway. So I guess that's, I'm starting to recall how that all happened and, and why you came. So I'm glad you guys became friends. Look yeah. at that, huh? Yeah, yeah. See? I mean, and you have a following too, which is wonderful. My, my daughter has um, Pallister Killian syndrome mm -hmm. and she, you know, she's, she's been uh, in a wheelchair for most of her life, although therapy now is she's making great strides. But, um, but you were just so kind to come and the Elks were doing an event for Brianna and they said, let's have, you know, a comedian, yeah. let's have a show. And so we brought Brianna out, and it was just an amazing night. So you had about uh, two or three um, other uh, comedians open for you that night. Uh, right. Uh, um, well, one guy is actually a, a doctor. He's a real doctor, okay. and he's a, a, a legendary uh, knee and shoulder surgeon, whatever you call that. Um, but uh, his name was Dr. John Kelly. He's out of Philadelphia. Uh, the female comedian was Pam DeButts, and I believe Tim Belford was on the show another comedian than myself yeah so that, that was a great night um it was i think it, it was during was it during the holidays it was I think right it was before so yes because mm -hmm. i remember you actually were making jokes about uh the tree that was in the room so i remember that so <laughs> you had the audience just really <laughs> I don't remember cracking exactly. up yeah i, remember I just remember that, it was so. to raise money for a specific vehicle right yeah we were able after your event. event we had enough money to purchase a handicap accessible vehicle all right so hey go there, comedy I mean, they're like seventy thousand dollars, so oh my God. we appreciated your help. But well, it, and it's great. changed our lives. You know, we've been able to take her to aqua therapy and to all kinds of different places. So it's not as hard as trying to lift her in and out of a sedan car. And you know, just it was That's it was fantastic. So so do you see what we're talking about? That act of love of you being there and just giving back to the community actually not only. Um, sparked uh, uh, the ability for her to get a seventy thousand dollar van, but also for her children to, or and her daughter specifically, to be able to now be integrated into the community and receive all these other services that she is receiving. Mm -hmm. So you, you're you're a complete inspiration, and we're so happy to have you here. Well, you know what? Everybody's got to give back somehow, and yeah. I have the ability to make people forget about their troubles for a little while. And let's keep on doing it. Let's do another one. So so. What do you do? You tell jokes, right? I tell you make jokes, people, I guess. Yeah. yeah so stories. Tell us a little bit about Life how stories. how that came. Just just tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, how is that? I guess since I was a little kid, I always wanted to be in showbiz. When I was a baby, my mother said they used me as the model to show um, new mommies how to diaper their kids. And huh. when she went to this uh, place for the demonstration, I was the model, and they were diapering me. So I guess I've been on stage since I was born. Uh huh. And then when I was just a little kid, I just, just <laughs> wanted to mimic television. Like whenever I saw a commercial, I would mimic the commercial. And then I was about maybe 10, 11 years old. I started doing all the plays in school. And then I was 13. I went to um, Herbert Berghoff Studios in New York City because I just wanted to be an actor. Yeah. I didn't start being funny till I was around 29. Wow. Because I moved to California and everybody in California was saying, you know, you people from New Jersey, the way you act, the way you talk, and, you know, it's funny. So I said, okay. And I grabbed the microphone and then I had a career between comedy and 
theatrical uh, performances. And now I'm addicted to performing. I do a show every night of the week. Oh my gosh. Well, I know you're all over the world. You're just yeah. all over, you know. It's getting it's crazier. I thought it would be slowing down around this time of my life, but uh, n it's bigger now than it's ever been. And I guess because of social media and putting videos out all over the place, it gets higher and higher. So there's millions of people watching me. And when I do my, let's say, podcast or my little live from my mother's basement, and I get the fan mail comes in as you're doing the podcast, this live. I can read, and then when people write in, and then you see their face, uh, I've been getting mail while I'm doing it from London and uh, mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia and crazy places, a lot of Italy, and so it's really cool. And, and what's, what I like the most is the teenagers. I never thought I was going to have fans within teenagers, but yeah. they go crazy. Yeah. They're funny. My, my children um, have watched you, and they're fans. Good. I have a 15-year-old, and I have a 24-year-old, and uh, definitely. Um, and my daughter, my daughter came to, to watch you at, uh, uh, you were at the Paramount at uh, Asbury. Oh, at Asbury. Yeah, that was several years ago. I brought friends there. Um, so uh, everyone likes being around you because you just make us laugh. You know, it's funny, you, you bring up the Paramount. Yeah. Now, the Paramount is actually a legendary theater. Correct. In Asbury Park, New Jersey, which is legendary for, let's say, Bruce Springsteen and, and other big names who came out of the area. Yeah. Also, uh, Bon Jovi and, and guys like this. And uh, I did the Paramount at a, at a time in 2006 when it was condemned. We did it because a, uh, a radio personality said to me, you could be the Bruce Springsteen of stand-up comedy. I know you could do it. And uh, I go, yeah, but nobody comes around <laughs> here anymore. <laughs> but we luckily filmed in front of 1,600 people, and they ended up doing the, the, the Paramount every summer. I didn't do it last year, but I'm going to do it again this up-and-coming summer. And recently, because of hosting a charity Correct. for Light of Day, which is for... Parkinson's. Okay. Um, now there's some people in the E Street Band that might want to produce an album. Look a at comedy that. Comedy album. And we would go back to the Paramount. Look at that. Yeah, that would be cool. You so go, give Mike. It back and I'm taking back. <laughs> you now. go, Mike. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I always wanted to meet Bruce, but uh, maybe this this will happen this time. All right. So if you're watching, Bruce. We all want to meet you. You need to, Bruce. <laughs> pull up the East Street thing. <laughs> I, I was just at the Stone Pony uh, at a conference just not, not too long ago. Uh -huh. So, yeah. So, and but also, um, tell us about your documentaries, because I'm, I'm, I'm amazed at um, you know, everything that you experienced in the 80s and at the shore. I mean, it, it was such a, it's a time that people think about and fantasize about, and just like, it was just such a, you know, and I see on Facebook, remember when, and they'll have like an old. That's how we <laughs> met. Yeah. We met in 1980, I don't remember. <coughs> uh, yeah, I was much younger, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I was much younger then. Yeah. So let me just well, say so that. Was but, but no, but um, we met, and Mike used to, he and his brothers had this shore house, and they called it. The Shore House, with, S U R E. That's shore correct, house. right? And it was a bunch of guys, all with surfboards and all with. Um, I remember. I, I don't know. Our T-shirts. Yeah, the, the little open T-shirts. You know, so uh, Mike would get up with his camcorder. It was on his shoulders, and Mike would be just recording everyone and every all of us you know i had friends we all went there he had how many people at these parties close to four or five hundred yes <clears throat> and he would get up on top of the roof right yeah. <laughs> and film from there so tell us i guess it's like i said i was a ham my whole life i always wanted to entertain and i always liked making people have fun but i guess i had an affection for being the center of attention as well so if nobody was looking, I found a way to get everybody to look. So I went on the roof of the house and said, I'm up here, take a look. And everybody would look and we would have dance contests. But we weren't really doing anything other animal houses, beach houses weren't doing. We just took it to the extreme. And it was in an era of, let's say, 1986 to 1999, where everybody was staying at the house, having fun. But all that footage, of course, was in that big, big camera and I guess about 10 years ago, I transferred it to DVD. And then in the last two years, we decided, well, maybe we have a documentary here. So I interviewed my friends now who are in their 50s about what it was like to be in their 20s in the 80s. 
and then I actually have the footage for you to see it. <laughs> so it's kind of like, uh, it's almost tear jerking in yeah. a way because you're looking at yourself like, oh my God, I was such <laughs> a kid. <laughs> and then you're saying, wow, I think we had more fun then than they have it now. Yeah. And now everybody could videotape that stuff in their phone. Yeah. So I'm hoping we'll sell that and it would be a documentary, like a, a two hour documentary where you actually could go watch this in the movies. You know, and you would have to be so, in it because you could talk about it because I have footage of you running I around the party. sure you and your so. friends. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it was, uh, you've shared some of the clips with us and uh, Jack and I. We Jackie, just, yeah, Dee Dee, yes, I need you. We, uh, <laughs> there are a lot more, but we just laugh because you're looking at those things and we don't look anything, I don't think we look anything alike anymore, but uh, it's just a lot of fun. I actually showed my kids. You sent me a clip and I showed my kids and I said, this is mommy with her big hair yes. and her. There's not I a lot mean, of footage from that. <laughs> big <laughs> hair, <laughs> Big clothes, hair and, you know, per, I think we had perms at some times, you know, and then was it uh, the pencil skirts up to like here, so. I was probably I about 30 pounds lighter. <laughs> How did you get 400 people to come? Oh. I heard, didn't you say you just, you, you'd make... We'd give, we'd give out an invitation. Do you remember the era of open house party? Mm -hmm. Everybody just said, oh, it was an open house party on this block. Sure. And all you had to do was walk down the block and take a look in the driveway. And you're like, wow, look at all those people. <laughs> but what we did was we purposely would just only invite girls so that we can have 50% girls and 50% guys. Because girls would invite guys, but guys would invite guys. So you didn't invite men. You didn't have to. They'd find it. They'd smell it. They'd see the barbecue in the air like a, an Indian smoke signal. <laughs> yeah. There's a party over there. But, and we, had, we used to have really good parties. So many people actually got married from these parties. Yes. Because, you know, you met. You met, and you nobody had later. Facebook. Yeah. You, nobody was getting their phone number. You had to write it on a napkin. <laughs> oh my God. And hopefully you got the right phone number when you called five days later. And you went to the extent of making cards, like cards. really cards. Yeah. That, um, I, we have got to, uh, you know, I should have told you to bring it so we could show it, but at any rate, cards with all the guys. How many were you on? Uh, it was always uh, 15 guys. And But yes, and then the surfboard, they said Shorehouse, Shorehouse and all the guys. That's what they were given out. And yeah. you, you were talking about the cost of these parties, uh, which were pretty high. Yeah, so, so tell us a little bit about that. Well, <laughs> everybody had to kick in to start the party. But what we did was we charged $10 to get in. But the charge was never for anything but the plastic mug. That was our way to jump the law. Because if they paid to get in, we served alcohol. But if they bought the mug, well, I didn't know what they were doing at the party. <laughs> it's not my fault they put beer in that <laughs> piece of plastic. Yeah. It's not what we bought it yeah. for. And it worked. <laughs> so, and and uh, the house stayed in the family. I believe your brother Paul My brother Paul bought it when I was 21. He was 22. Hey. We were kids. Yeah. And, Technically. And then you, he, he owns the house right now. Yeah, you I took sold my off. share to my brother. And I don't even remember how long ago, yeah. but I had moved to California. Correct, correct. So, but you still come and, oh, yeah. and visit. Uh, you still surf. I, you were there about a summer ago. I, I, I thought you posted that you were I don't surf as much as my two brothers. Yes. I wish Anthony I could. And, they yeah. live down by the water and they're yeah, surfing that's now. Where I live. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, well, you're lucky. Yeah, I yeah. wish I lived down there, too. Yeah. So, well, you're too busy traveling and being famous and doing yeah. all the things you do. So, <laughs> you know, Mike, um, I, this is a terrible question, but I'm going to ask it. What's your favorite joke? Because I My favorite yeah, joke of tell, what I do? Yeah, or? what you tell. Tell us, a, tell us a joke. I want to give our audience just a little taste of, of <laughs> what you do because, God, it's funny. <laughs> well, I don't know if I have any favorite jokes that are mine. I have favorite routines, but I actually like a lot of the stuff that I do about my actual family okay. and uh, everyday life. Like, I like poking fun out of what everybody sees. I don't ever make fun of people, just situations. But um, here's one of my favorite jokes. Right. I'll do it right here on the show because it's Halloween. Ah. It's tomorrow's Halloween. I don't know if they okay. can say that on your show. What time and date you air your show, but excuse it's, me. It's um, all good. 
Halloween is now being celebrated bigger now than it's probably ever has. Kids don't make their costumes anymore. They go out and they buy it. And they go to a Halloween store. So I have some nieces and they bought Halloween costumes. And I said, the kids are spoiled. Because when I was a kid, my mother made my Halloween costume. She really did. Because I was too young to go trick-or-treat with my older brother. So my mother said, okay, trick-or-treat in the basement. But there's no people down there. And she goes, well, I'll hide candy around on the floor. And you can get it. I said, well, give me a costume. So she put the coloring on my head, a wooden spoon in my hand, an oven mitt over the hand over here, and a dirty dish towel on my neck. And I'm standing there in my diapers with the colander, a pasta strainer on my head. And I said, but who am I supposed to be? I'm supposed to be somebody. She said, you're al dente. And for 50 years, I thought al dente was an action adventure hero from Italy that we didn't know about in America. And now I think that joke is adorable. I think so too. <laughs> I'm laughing. And you wonder, some people are like al dente. You, know, like, you don't have to be Italian to get al dente. And that's that's a joke. But that comes from the truth. Yeah. That comes from the truth. But, you know, we go into the way things are today as opposed to the way it was when we were younger. Um, when we were kids, we played with the pots and pans. And you banged on them with the wooden spoon. And then when you were done, she used it to make dinner. Nowadays, who knows what these kids do, you know? If you did something like that, you'd probably get thrown in jail. Your parents would be doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Um, Mike, you, you travel a lot. And uh, tell us a little bit about the travels that you have going on right now. Well, yeah, now uh, it seems like I'm on a plane every week. I didn't know how this really came about, but when you start selling tickets in theaters and the theater starts calling you saying, hey, you know, I see uh, what you're doing. We want to make some money, so come on in. It seems to come in, in like a bit of a landslide. And every day you start getting more and more phone calls, more and more places. So it's not like you could say no. Because if you did, you might not get the opportunity again. Sure. Plus, now the areas are bigger. Um, I have a lot of theaters lined up next year, 2019, for New Jersey. We're probably going to film a few of them. But I have Chicago, Canada. And in Canada, you got to think, not just Canada, Canada, but Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver. Sure. And you hit the areas. Um, so... Just this week alone, I'm, I flew in to go to Philadelphia, but I'm coming from Reno. And you're heading to the Caribbean. Right. Correct. As soon as I finish yeah. this week of shows, I'm going to go on a ship and entertain for a week in the you Caribbean. You could use a break. <laughs> yeah. And you can, uh, your website has every... MikeMarino.net. You can't go wrong. Log on. <laughs> YouTube, baby. Watch the series. Make America Italian again. So those are pilots that you have. I think you, you watched a preview of one of the pilots, right? Yeah, I, I saw the, the Jersey Shore, and I saw the, um, yeah, all the, the clips that you send are awesome. Well, and luckily now, the, the 18 episodes we did of the, the show, Make America Italian Again, is on Amazon Prime. And it's doing really well, and all the characters are very funny. It's, it's very clean. It's just tongue-in-cheek. It's kind of, if you were watching The Sopranos running for President of the United States, it's just... It's actually silly. We use the word, it's stupid. You did a bunch of stupid, but we're supposed to say silly. It's silly. Yeah. Nobody gets hurt. We don't curse. We don't swear. We just do silly things. And uh, I'm, I got a lot of people calling me up going, are you really running for president in 2020? I'm like, no, it's a joke. I, I don't have that kind of time. But then again, maybe I should. <laughs> I'll straighten out the country. <laughs> That's funny. And what do you think? When people meet you in other countries and other states, I mean, what is their impression in New Jersey? I tell people all the time, um, people around the world have an affection for people from New Jersey. They can't believe we sound like this, we act like this, we talk like this. And as long as I have that little bit of an essence wherever I go, I'm going to keep selling tickets because people want to meet that. They want to see, is that real? You know, I mean, you watch some of the shows that they have out there, like just say Jersey Housewives. People are like, wow, is that, is that real? And that's when I go, well, kind of. I'm a little bit more real. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't look Italian. That's your background. You look Irish. I know that you tell that sometimes when you get breaks on TV, uh, people want you to play Irish some. Irish cop. <laughs> it just happened again. 
The movie that I did, uh, Critic Sized, uh -huh. where I co-star in this movie, I play a detective. And no one knew I was a comedian the whole time we were filming because I wanted to just be a serious actor. Yeah. When it was wrapped and we were done, I invited the whole cast out to the Laugh Factory in Los Angeles. And they're like, no way. <laughs> You're a comedian? I'm like, yeah. yeah that. That's what I wanted. But I'm, I'm having more fun at doing now. And recently, yesterday, I got a phone call from the producer who's doing my show on Friday night in Pennsylvania that they're doing a uh, show in Brooklyn, which is like the Sopranos of Brooklyn. Okay. And they said, uh, we'd really like to give you a role. And I said, fantastic. I know how to play a, a mob boss, a hitman, a soldier. He goes, well, there's a cop who's kind of on the take. I'm like, perfect. Oh, uh, that's <laughs> perfect. so funny. All right, give me the role. <laughs> so, so, Mike, if you... Um, I know you've been all over the world, uh, but what is one place that you have in mind that you'd love to go? If anybody's watching and they live in that area, where would you like to go? Well, I'm hoping this year it's going to be Australia and England. Wonderful. Yeah, because uh, I've been getting fan mail from out that way, and come. they ask me when I'm coming. <laughs> I'd like to do Australia. Very nice. Long or, flight, uh, but worth it, right? I'll stay a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like nice. to get out of I'm hand. excited about Amazon Prime. I didn't know you really had shows on there. Well, this is the second one, hopefully. That's fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My uh, Live from the Borgata runs on Amazon Prime. So I have Live from the Borgata, which is on mm, so many different platforms, but it's from 2006. Pandora, it's on Pandora and... Um, I don't know, there's just so many channels, but it's so, not on Amazon Prime, but the Life from Borgata is Amazon Prime exclusive. So, so you're working on uh, several pilots here, uh, several pilots right now. What are... What well, we shot them, there? you know, you got to get in the game and shop it to a network or some production company that wants to partner with you and they like the product and they take it to where it needs to go. Any particular theme, any particular, what, you know, story or is there... Is it a family? Is it, you know, what's, what are they about? The Make America Italian Again, which is the mockery of us running for president, could be a Netflix original. I, I would see it that way. There's a lot of movie stars that want to be in it now, and hopefully that'll happen. The one that I had in mind that I was closest to is called Reconstructing Jersey. And that's just about a family living in a small suburban town trying to make ends meet. Okay which is normally the best formula. If you look at all the successful shows, like Everyone Loves Raymond, it's the same formula. It goes all the way back to The Honeymooners. Well, you have the Modern Family, you have um, yeah. Yeah, a different program. Modern yeah. Family Jersey style. Yeah. That would be a show people would watch. <laughs> ah. I think it's just such a gift to be able to make people laugh, you know, to be able to, to have that, you know, that passion. This weekend in Reno, there was this older couple in the front row, and the lady was laughing so hard. She must have been 82, 83 years old, and she's with her husband, and they were adorable. Uh. And I, she just squeaked one time, and I go, are you okay? She goes, my sides are splitting. <laughs> and I took out my phone, and I go, you got to say that yeah. again. And I videotaped her, and I put it all over the internet, and people were just like, oh my God, what does that feel like? I'm like, I don't know, it just makes me happy that yeah. this lady is, is having that much fun, yes, you, you know? And you need a they'll, re they'll repeat what I said for days. They'll tell their friends, they'll send in some letters on, on Facebook, which that's the best part. And and don't get me wrong, you, you get drunk people that don't like, I don't get it, I don't get it. I'm like, then get out. <laughs> I love how you capture those moments, though. You do that in your basement, in your mother's yeah. basement. I love that part, that those segments you do. And it's like, you just capture real life because you're, you're, everything that you do is you're looking at life in a different way to help people laugh about it. And you also have a lot of um, supporters within the community that just really come out. We, we were at one of your mixers, uh, I think you, you, you yeah. came, yes, and uh, just to hear people talk about not only the contributions that you make towards uh, the charity organizations, uh, charitable organizations, and uh, some of the, yeah, the community events that you attend and what you give, it's what you're doing for them because you're also known for linking people to other 
I, I know for a fact that when you don't, when somebody reaches reaches out to you and you cannot make that event, you ha usually refer somebody else, right? So you don't, it's not where it stops. And and that speaks to us, especially with the theme that we have, uh, you know, stories of love, con you know, conversations of love. You That's exactly what you're providing. Uh, I can't do this, but I know somebody else who can do it. And opening doors for people, uh, that must feel really rewarding to be able to just be seen as uh, not only a comedian, a great actor, but also as someone who is just connecting, connecting people, you know, a connector. So I, I just want to say, you know, thank you for everything that you've been doing. Of course. Had it not been for you, we would have not met yeah. and uh, we ha wouldn't have done some of the things that, that I wouldn't have a van. <laughs> <laughs> Mariana wouldn't have a handicap accessible van. Well, when you guys become story. the next morning show, then I'm guaranteed to be in interviewed. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So Mike, what message would you like to send our audience when it comes uh, going back to the theme, laugh, uh, love, or what would you say? A little bit of, uh, well, you know that cliche, and I don't think it really is a cliche, that laughter is the best medicine. There are people who seek out laughter to, make the, to forget about the day, forget about their troubles. I think the real theory is when you're laughing, you breathe better, and it changes your attitude, makes you happier. Um, there's this program in California called y Laughter and Yoga. They crack jokes while they're doing yoga. I was like, well, I... I guess that could help you too. I couldn't do that. I, I can't ah, do yoga. We but, would um, love to hear more about uh, everything that you have to say. We hope to have you back uh, sometime. Whenever after. you want. And uh, it, we're running out of time. I just want to say thank you for being here with sure. us. Everyone, thank you for watching. I am Miji. I'm Patty. And we are here with Inspire. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, we are so thrilled to have you.